Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Wandering Watercolor. Let's paint. So this is the third page of the Chattanooga Scenery watercolor coloring book that I make. If you're interested, I'll leave the description for that in uh, the link for that in the description, I should say. Um, the idea is that when we're done, it'll look something like that. Obviously, there'll be some variation. Watercolor can be very um, tricky just because you you won't always get the same ratio of pigment to water as you're mixing it and laying it down. But that's basically the idea of what it, of what it'll look like. As always, um, have a piece of paper on the side just so you can kind of test out different colors as you're mixing them and also a nice porcelain dish to mix your colors in is always help always helpful and uh, paints any paint palette will work um, this is just the one that I make although I may be discontinuing to make it I'm looking to partner with a company that actually makes paint just because it is hugely time-consuming and I just can't keep up with the demand well, that's a whole nother story and uh, always on the side just have one or two cups of water and let's get started first and foremost I'll go ahead and I will wet the paints any type of watercolor paint that you use this is always helpful to do just because it makes it easier to work with the color and let's see Uh, also, a little towel, paper towel, something to use as a rag to dry off your brush and also um, dab the painting if needed. That also helps. The very first thing we will do is I'll grab some green, a little more, and get a bunch of yellow. It's okay if we get a little bit of green in the yellow, that's fine. First thing is, we're going to use, this is the base color for the trees and the grass. We'll go ahead and we'll lay that in. Like that. Anywhere you see any shrubs or grass, feel free to just lay that in. You don't have to rush, just take your time. And if you go over some of the lines or bleeding into another spots a little bit um, that's fine that's part of the appeal of watercolor is that it can be a little chaotic but when you make it all kind of like come together and with the shading and the colors it looks very pleasant so we're just going in just going in a little bit at a time keeping in mind that the, this color will dry lighter, as all watercolors do. And once they are dry, we will go back in and do a, a wash for the a darker color for the sh for the shading. This was a picture that I had taken on a sunny day. Uh, we're going to imagine that the the light is coming from the upper right hand corner, kind of down like this. Okay, there's that. Just putting some of that there. Kind of avoiding this lamp post here. Go ahead and we'll do the same. Now, this little patch of grass is closer to us and we can clearly see some of the some of the ground where it would be just like dirt. Um, go ahead and paint it all in because when we go back over it, we will alter the color a little bit to show that it's ground and not grass. So that's fine for now. We're just kind of trying to establish where the different colors are. That uh, when you just do the flat washes like this, and a flat wash is basically when you just aren't adding any texture, you're not um, 
adding any specific details, just blocking in the color is kind of the, the idea. This tree here is a little funky, kind of has like a, was growing a little weird. I thought, I thought it was interesting. I thought about editing it for the, for the page itself to make it look more uniform, but honestly, it's, it's, it has its own character. I didn't want to um, adjust it for any reason. Sometimes I will leave things out of the pages that I make or add things that I think would make it better. Um, so this one I just decided to leave it just because it looks interesting. And yeah, this this spot right here, I forgot if I mentioned, it's it's on, if you want to drive by it, if you're ever in Chattanooga, it's located on the corner of um, Cherry Street and 3rd Avenue, or was it 3rd Street? Cherry Street and 3rd Street maybe, in downtown. There's a cute little um, apartment building, and every time I drive by it, I always think to myself that I should paint it. And that's what we're doing now. There's a lot of really nice sceneries around Chattanooga. I've noticed that um, I actually had maybe over 50 different photo references that I had taken that I was working off of. And the 10 that I decided to keep in the book are just the most iconic of the city. And uh, as well as good compositions. So now we're going to mix the kind of red, more pink sort of... Uh, brick color for the building and I grabbed a bunch of brown and we're going to dilute that obviously and I'm gonna grab a bunch of red and just kind of mix them together more red probably so this might be close to what we need it's just it's too pigmented so we're just going to add more water Okay, let's see here. I'm just gonna do a couple of test marks. So that's close, but maybe a little more pink. That looks too brown. Too brown and too dark. A little more, more, uh, more red there. And then also more water to make it lighter. It's always very easy to add like dar darker shades and tones with watercolor, but this is, um, we're, we're, so we're building up the, from the light to dark. So I think this actually looks pretty good. Yeah, I think, I think that's fine. And so this part is going to take a little bit to lay in all the color but just take your time and one thing to always remember if you're doing the like the little details over here the more up and down you hold your brush the more straight up and down it is the easier it is to get uh, a straight line like for example if i grab my scrap piece of paper here oh i forgot i taped it down i'm just gonna grab another scrap piece of paper so if i go straight up and down like this it's very easy for me to get a very thin line, but if I go, if I tilt my brush, it's much harder. That you have to really kind of do just the tip, and it's much harder. It's much easier if you're going straight up and down. So just keep keep that in mind as you're filling in these areas here. And so we're just gonna go like this, like that. And don't don't stress out too much about like if the pigment pulls in one place or um, if it looks a little off. It's fine. It's totally fine. Okay, come in like that, like that. And as you use up the pigment in your brush, you can also actually go back to other areas that have too much pigment in them. And then just pick some of that up and then redistribute it to another part of the painting. So like for example, I can tell that my brush is getting, has less water and pigment on it currently. So I could go back and just grab some of that and redistribute it to another, to another spot that I know needs it. 
can go like that. Actually, this roof part here is also the same color. Also over here. Maybe pick up a little more if it'll allow us. If it won't, it's not the end of the world. Just doing all of that. Down here for the stairs. And we end right at the pavement. All this. And if you paint over a part that you're not supposed to paint over, honestly, this is a very detailed image. Nobody's gonna know, just just to be honest. As long as it looks good, you're totally fine. I actually messed up. I was supposed to leave these um, stairs white. Eh, it's all right. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Go underneath here a little bit, like that, like that. In here, and then this. And then also down here. And just kind of a little bit at a time. Sometimes I'll go back in these videos and I'll kind of speed it up just to see from the beginning to the end. Um, it's always interesting to see how when you first lay down the color how it looks and as you see the video speed up You just see the color dry and literally change Like Darkness or lightness L literally get lighter in front of your eyes as it's speeding up and it's uh, It almost kind of makes some it's almost like it makes it click in your head. It's like oh, okay That's what the color does. It's just that you have to t keep that into account during real time as you're painting and then you see how that translates if you look if you look at the video on like double the speed for example okay just all of that in there i know that this part looks a little darker and that's actually fine because we are going to add extra shadows um in those porch ceilings Go right here and just kind of fill it in. And throughout the process of me filling in this color on the building, there's been numerous times where I've accidentally gone into another object that I wasn't really supposed to. But it's fine because as long as the uniformity of the, the color and composition is there, it's not really the way that the color is placed isn't as important. It's more so that everything looks fairly uniform and makes sense. Okay, we have all that. And up here. And then this. And we're almost done with laying down this color. We'll pick some of that up over there. It's actually this right here. This whole strip over here. I'm gonna fill that in. We're gonna leave this part. Well, actually, I painted this one already, so I'm just gonna fill it in. So I'm gonna go like this. And then also right here. Yeah, if I if I look at the reference image again. Um Okay, so actually, no, it was fine. I just I got confused because at <laughs> at what point I was looking at the picture. 
So, okay, so this is the reference image and this is what we're painting. So it looks pretty good so far. And, okay, yeah. Okay, so the next thing, while that's drying, we will go ahead and mix in the, the pavement color. For the for the sidewalk, uh, okay. So we're gonna grab some water and grab a little bit of brown, and then a little bit of blue, light blue. Kind of mix it in. It gives a nice. Yeah, that's a pretty nice. I might actually throw in a little bit more brown just to give it a little more like a hue to it so it's not because then when we put in the the gray for the for the road we want it to be more differentiated okay so we have that I'm gonna grab I'm gonna dilute it with some water just because we don't want it to be too strong I'm just gonna go ahead and lay all of that in right there And then we're just gonna stop like right there. We're not gonna worry too much about that. Actually, I'm gonna, <coughs> I'm gonna rinse off my brush, dry it off, and then actually I'm just gonna pick up some of that end there. And okay, that looks good. And then while that's drying, I'm actually gonna grab another little plate here. And for the windows, all the windows on this building, I basically, I'm just going to use some uh, dark blue. So I'm just gonna grab that and just kind of mix it in here. Grab a little bit of water. I don't want it to be too water because then it'll make it kind of difficult to get the details in. Okay, so I'm gonna go in there just like that and I'm keeping my brush at an angle just so that I'm not obstructing the camera but if you want to um, if you want to uh, be more comfortable you know going like this and whatnot yeah go ahead and feel free to do that I'm just gonna go ahead and do this going kind of slowly trying to keep some of those details in there and again if I if they don't all fit in or if I mess up a little bit it's it's okay we, we can still work with that Go in there that Just a little bit at a time, not rushing. Maybe get a little more water, a little more paint. There we go. And then also these windows down here.
and just just a flat wash and <clears throat> it doesn't even have to be perfect um, just giving the idea of differentiation of colors between objects and sometimes it makes it more interesting when you kind of leave some white gaps as you lay down especially if it's on glass it can actually make it look more um, I don't know glass like I guess okay so that's we're good on that rinse off our brush and then with the same blue that we have here I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab some of the brown kind of mix it up and get some more blue I'm going for a dark uh, gray or dark blue gray that I'm just gonna test it on the side here yeah, that, that's perfect and I'm just gonna lay it down over the entirety of this door just like that and Actually, this one right here, uh, this was actually a door, not a window. Um, we can totally just go right over that. That's fine. That was my mistake. I was not paying attention. So we'll just do that. And we can also do the same thing up here. And just cover all of that with that color. And rinse our brush, and that's looking pretty nice. And when I looked at the reference photo, actually, I'm just going to pull it up again. Let me see here. So the reference photo, it's actually, the light is more coming from, like, straight down. Maybe a little bit of an angle to the left as opposed to the right. So, um... Yeah, that's, we'll just imagine that it's going like this. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. So for that, we're going to mix up some of the shading for the green. But actually, before we get into that, I'm just going to grab some straight brown from here. Maybe, maybe mix it up a little bit. But it's just going to be just the straight color. And I'm just going to lay that down for the, for the trunk of the small tree in the back here. And the small tree over here. And then this tree here. And then this tree right here. And then it's my brush. That's it. We're good on that. And now we can that that brown that we have we can just grab some green as well and mix it all together and get some more water Okay, some more water And let's see, that's a good dark shadow green. Okay, what we're doing here is I'm just gonna do like little kind of like U shaped like this. Like not a full U, but just kind of like almost like a, I don't know. Um, down downward facing or upward facing crescent I guess so yeah basically just going a little bit like this just like this just to show that there's some volume and layering of leaves and then um, kind of tapering it out a little bit as it goes higher up um, 
maybe sh shorter strokes with uh, more space in between them just to show that there's more shadow at the bottom. So we're going to do the same for this one over here. I'm going up. Okay. And we can repeat over some areas if we want them to appear a little darker. And same over here. And you can it, you can layer several brush strokes on the same spot or just or just move move about giving that feeling of form through the shadow of the tree. Switch out for the lamppost there a little bit. And here and there, okay, that looks good. And then we're gonna finish off with this one over here. And it does not, it does not have to look exactly like mine does. You know, you, shadows are all different. You can kind of play around, add a little more here, there. Maybe make the strokes a little more sporadic. I'd say that all looks pretty good. And now, for the shadow that the the trees themselves would be casting what we'll do is we'll grab this same color we'll dilute it a bit so it's not as strong so maybe more like yeah that's good and then we'll just go ahead and we'll lay it down we're gonna lay it down on the bottom kind of like almost like a circle underneath the tree like imagine how it would be hitting the the floor and then also go over into the pavement a little bit just to show that the shadow is extending out and just kind of do the same here and just going a little bit over like that this one probably needs a little more pigment there we go and then the same with these two just a little bit like that it doesn't have to be perfect but you get the idea these shadows will obviously look lighter as they dry. Give myself my brush. And after that, we can focus on adding some of the shading in the building itself. So we'll go back to this color. What we'll do is we'll grab, we'll actually grab some of the brown, mix it in, and just a little bit of purple. If you don't have purple, that's okay. Just use some uh, blue, dark blue, preferably. And that gives us a nice contrasting shadow color to work with. That looks perfect. First things first, we'll go ahead and we'll put the ceiling on the porch here, like that. And then that'll also extend a little bit into here, just to show up. Oh, I made a mistake a little, that's fine. Just to show a little bit, kind of like that. There we go, same thing here. Just a little bit and extend it down towards the wall so that we get the sense that there is a shadow there. Also back here just a little bit. As well as just a little line running underneath this kind of like drain pipe over here. Or not pipe, but uh, gutters, I should say, on the top of the building. 
if you if you do just that little line right there that actually gives a lot of depth it really helps define the form just like that okay and then over here same thing over that and we can actually go over this door frame a little bit like that just like with one or two strokes um, it'll keep the shadow more uniform there we go and over here as well kind of going down like that and around this little light and then also covering the door. Okay, I'm just gonna step back a moment. That looks good. We are gonna do just a little shadow over here for the pipe going down, just because it'll help define it, it'll stand out better. Like that, and like that. Maybe a little bit over here, so that that looks good. As well as over here for this one, covering the door a bit. There we go. And I think it actually looks pretty good. We're good on that. Then this um, this area over here where I said that there would be some dirt, um, what we'll do is we'll grab a little bit of brown and mix it in with this green right here. I believe that's the green that we used earlier. We'll go ahead and we'll mix it together. And then lay that in kind of around some of the grass, in and around, just to show it peeking through. There we go. So that's good. And um, if you look at so the finished painting, it has it has a roof. Um, this one, we just need to put a roof on it. Um, and, and I know that I that it does look a little different from the original one, but I actually like this one a little better. And I think it'll actually look better when we're done, because the sh the shadows have higher contrasts. Okay, so I'll go over here. <clears throat> Just kind of a diagonal back a little bit. Like that. And then just kind of pull it up just a tad. There we go. Just like that. And this is the same color that we used for the doors. So you can just go ahead and use the same color. And actually, I'll go ahead and dilute it a bit so that I can um, put a color to that uh, aluminum roofing or whatever kind of metallic roofing that they have over here. And a line over here. And this one as well. Okay, so all of that looks pretty good so far. I'll rinse off my brush. And then get um, a color mixed up here for the, for the pavement. So for that, we will grab a little bit of the light blue, mix it in, oh, well, too much it's okay we'll grab some of this brown mix it up let's see so that's looking pretty good we're just gonna grab a bunch more water just so we can kind of thin it out make it lighter and then the way that we'll we will apply this color here 
for the for the pavement right here is we will basically you you have the color on your brush and you're pressing down on the paper as you're pulling it out just to give it texture so basically you just go like this and then press it down and then just pull it out just like that and do that a couple of times just to make it just to give it more uh, interest like there's like there's something going on there like some is dynamic makes it look more appealing like that there we go and then use the same color just to fill in this line running all the way back of the sidewalk pavement and just fill it in like that and that, that looks pretty good rinse off our brush the next step would be to mix the color for the light posts the way we will do that is by getting some green as a base and then some dark blue just mixing them together the the color of the light posts if you drive by them is a very kind of dark blue green with a metallic hint to them kind of hard to capture it's, it's a very particular color okay more blue I th think this is something close to what we need so let's give it a go I'm gonna the the part that's glass like where the light would be coming from I would just leave that just completely white and then kind of fill in the rest of it like that all the way down so that looks good I messed up a little bit down here but that's fine let it let it dry and let's get on this one over here okay so these look good um, this dries pretty quickly so we can always just go back over if we want to do another layer which is what I'm doing right now with the, the forefront light post I actually think that looks really good yep yeah I'm happy with that the only thing that I will do is I'll grab a little bit of the brown and mix it in with this um, pavement color that we had I'm gonna grab some of the dark blue and mix it in with that as well this is going to be the color for the shadow that the light posts are emitting. Let me see something one second. Huh, I didn't even realize that I had forgotten to put shadows <laughs> in the original painting that I did. Okay, that's fine. So we'll go ahead and we will. Um, actually, I wonder if it would be. Maybe we should just leave it without a shadow. If you want to do a shadow, all I would do is grab this color and then run a line going like this. That way. Yeah, this is your shadow. Why not? I was hesitant because we kind of leave... We, we leave the pavement here unfinished on purpose just to make it look more artistic. But, let's see with this one okay we'll go like this we'll go down a little bit just because of that change in level and then and just pull it out like that so that's that one and then down here same thing maybe just leave it like that kind of like unfinished just like a stroke and then that's it okay i think that's good i think that looks pretty good 
so for the final part I'll grab another one of these for the final part we actually just want to grab the light blue and then just kind of put in some water on there and let's see yeah that's perfect what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing that we did on the pavement but basically just outline around the outside a bit first I'll pull all that in like, like that and then out here like that and after that we're gonna wet our brush and then just kind of pull some of this out and then show the texture by pressing the pressing the brush against the uh, the paper Get some of that down here like that and like that just trying to make it more expressive so it's not just uh, it's not just an apartment building but adding a little bit of a flair to it I think makes it look very interesting and this off our brush I'm just gonna step back and look at it for a moment Sorry, I'm just toggling back and forth just because I'm fascinated with the difference because the colors are largely the same It's just that we put more contrast in different areas And maybe the trees are a little more yellow green, but This actually gives it a much stronger contrast, which I like it It, it looks more dynamic. I don't know Yeah, I like I like this one that we just finished Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that Hopefully all of that made sense. Um, I do apologize if it was confusing at any point, and I did kind of have to cut a little bit. I had to record this in two pieces just because uh, I actually confused myself with the reference image. Maybe next time I'll put it a little to the side so it's not right over the, uh, <laughs> the image that we're painting because that did definitely confuse me. Uh, yeah, if you have questions, throw them in the comments or send me an email message. I always try to respond right away. And with that, I will see you on the next episode. Thank you.